This is the new Jaguar F-Type. And in this video, I'm gonna give it a serious review. And to do that, I'm gonna talk you around the massive design changes. It's insane. Show you inside. Oh, I love a bit of heritage, me. Drive it on one of the finest roads in the world. Oh my God, the way this grips. Make a noise. What have you got in your bag? Something that's vibrating. See how much you can fit in it. <laughs> Test how quick it is. Oh yeah. Annoy some local wildlife. Classic Portugal, random dog. And of course, poke it with a stick. Oh, oh, got it kind of stuck. Now, before we get into all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. And if you've been watching for a while and you haven't subscribed yet, do it now. Otherwise, I'm going to find out and I make sure that all the videos that you then watch are just about Dacias. Yeah, I can do that. I have the power. Also, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can download the new CarWow app. And on that, you can do things like watch our video reviews, compare cars, compare offers and deals on various cars. And it's got a really cool car valuation tool. You can use it just by scanning a car's number plate and it'll tell you how much it's worth. So download it, it's free. Seeing as this is a video of a sports car, it makes sense to see how practical it is. So we've got a 700 kilometer trip. We've got all our gear, look, my suitcase, my backpack, uh, camera gear and cameraman Jack's rucksack as well. He doesn't think everything's gonna fit in this boot. It's got 300 litres. I think it will if I pack it cleverly. You don't think it's gonna happen, do you, Jack? No. It will, watch this. So we'll take his little bag here and put it into this area. There we are. Get my big bag and put it in here like this. I'm winning. Look, it's so fitting, Jack. You are totally wrong. Please fit. Look, we're going to do this. This, oh, shh. Um, right. I'm going to try another method. <laughs> Ow! We're just going to have to lose the parcel shelf. That'll just stay here in Porto. It's fine. We'll get another one online. <sighs> Come on, please shut. <laughs> shut. Come on. Yes. Now all the sensible stuff's out of the way, we can get on with enjoying this car and obviously being a five litre supercharged V8, we're going to experience the noise, which will be enhanced by the fact we're in this underground car park. So let's start it up. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh. Sorry about that guys. <laughs> I could just sit here doing that all day. That's enough of that. Let's go. Well look at this straight away. I'm getting the opportunity to test this car's comfort levels because I'm driving over a cobbled road. I've got the suspension in its comfort setting and it's actually doing an all right job. It's important for a grand tour or a sports car like this to be able to cope with situations such as bad surfaces. It's past this one. I decided I'm gonna pull into the service station because not being able to set the back is really doing my head in. It's a problem with a sports car like this. See what I can do. Bear with me. This is real exciting motoring journalism. I love the way that goes up and down. It's cool. Yeah. Right. Let's go like that. That should work if it shuts. Give it a little bit of a help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, we can do it. Yeah, good. Let's go again. Do you know what? I think I want it over the other side. Here we go again. Is that better? What's that noise? It's your bag. What have you got in your bag? Something that's vibrating. Electric toothbrush. 
or shaver. Honestly, that's all it can be. There's nothing else in there. Promise you, I'm gonna go find out. <laughs> Embarrassing. Ow. Look at this crap I have to take with me when I'm traveling. I'm asking. <laughs> Shaver, you see? It was nothing untoward, you dirty minded buggers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is supposed to be a car review video. <laughs> we'll get to the car review in a bit, promise. Right, let's get going. <laughs> there are a few things that annoy me slightly about this car for long distance work. It's the fact that this doesn't have the radar controlled cruise control. So look, there's a car in front of me. Really, you need a system that will let you stay a safe distance from the car in front. This one won't. I can set it and it'll try and drive for the car. Look, it's gonna try and drive through him, so yeah. I probably shocked him a bit. What is the point of having cruise control in Europe that doesn't keep your safe distance from the car in front? It's just useless. You're not gonna use it. This car does have lane keeping assist, so it will keep me in lane. Look, we're, we're gonna weave. Do it. Come on, it's kind of trying. No, it's, it's, no. It sort of tries to get you back into lane. Mind you, I guess it's appropriate. This car is a Jaguar and a bit like a cat you can't fully trust it to have your back because you think everything's fine. Maybe they're stroking it and it's all good. And then it'll suddenly turn around and whoosh, scratch you. I wish this particular car had that full cruise control system you get on most premium cars now, which would do everything for you. Steer, brake, accelerate, shouldn't you along in traffic. Obviously you have to keep your hands on the wheel and stuff like that, but it just makes driving long distances so much easier. It's really odd that this is supposed to be the new F-Type and you cannot get that system on it. It actually shows you that it's just a heavily reworked version of the old F-Type. It's missing key tech, and I would like that key tech. Let's talk about engines. Now bear with me, because there's quite a few numbers here. So the race kicks off with a two-litre turbo petrol, which has 300 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. It's rear-wheel drive only, and it can do 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. Then there's a three-litre supercharged V6, which we actually don't get in Europe, which is annoying, because it sounds awesome. It has 380 horsepower and 460 newton meters of torque. You can get it as rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and it can do 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Then there's a supercharged 5 litre V8 with 450 horsepower and 580 newton meters of torque. Once again, you can have it as rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, and it can do 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds. Finally, there's this car, which is the range topping F Type R. It also has a 5 litre supercharged V8, but this time it's tuned to 575 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. Like all other F types, it comes with an 8 speed automatic gearbox, though you can only have it with all wheel drive. Jaguar says this car will do 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, but I want to find out for myself. So I've got my specialist timing gear here. I'm going to launch it. Oh, yeah. Feels quick. That's it. And we've got 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. It's close enough. Well, God damn. Quite literally, there's a huge dam here. I'm gonna go check it out. That is seriously impressive. It must have some serious stopping power. Speaking of which, so does this car. <laughs> yeah. So this VAR version has upgraded brakes over the normal F-Type. 380 millimeter disc at front, gripped by two piston calipers. At the back, you've got 376 millimeter disc, gripped by single piston calipers. But you can upgrade to carbon ceramics, then you have six pistons at the front and four pistons at the rear. And the discs are slightly bigger as well, all round. Yeah, despite that, you save some weight. 21 kilos in total over the normal iron brakes. An upgrade worth considering if you're gonna be going on track a lot. While this F-Type has had a major facelift, underneath the skin, the chassis is pretty much the same 
as the old versions. However, for V8 models, there's been a serious reworking of the suspension. So the suspension arms, the knuckles, and pretty much everything that holds the wheels onto the body is stiffer than in the previous generation car. Also, they've given it soft anti-roll bar at the front, stiffer at the back, they've recalibrated the electric power steering, and the result is that this car is supposed to be more responsive, yet also more progressive on the limit. And to find out just what it feels like, I've come to the perfect location. So this road here, it's called the N222, and it's been voted as one of the best driving roads in the world. So, if this car doesn't put a smile on my face here, it's never gonna. All right, and Jaguar, what have you got? A lot of power. And thankfully, all-wheel drive, though it's rear drive bias, only 30% maximum of the torque can go to the front wheels and almost 100% can go to the back. Also at the rear, it's got an electronically controlled limited slip differential, so you can send power to the wheel with the most grip. I tell you what, they've got the responsiveness down all right. As for progressiveness, well, I ain't gonna find out on this road because I haven't got much room for error. There's easily enough grip for me to haul ass along here as fast as I dare. And anyway, look, this is the reality. Come all the way to Portugal in this wonderful sports car, and then that happens. And yes, I may have almost all the power in the world, but it's still not quite enough to zip me past this because after about 50 meters, there's another sharp turn. Oh. Oh, here you maybe? No, because I can't see what's coming around the corner. Look, no, no, I'm not going to risk that. No. It was fun <laughs> for a brief moment. There should be a rule when you have a car like this, everyone else on the road who's got less than 200 horsepower has to get off it. And then when you do need to overtake, you've got plenty of pulling power with this thing. I like the fact that Jaguar has stuck with the supercharged engine. There's a better relationship between what your right foot's doing on the throttle pedal and the performance you get from the engine, whereas a turbocharged car, it's almost like an on-off switch. The boost builds and you just ride that wave of torque, whereas this, it's more keyed into your brain. The further you push your foot, the more performance you get. There's no coming on boost all of a sudden, it's just progressive and that's really handy on roads like this. Now I've finally got the opportunity to enjoy them. And now I'm in a town, so just as I was getting into it, I'm gonna to have to back off and crawl along again. Another good thing about a car like this is that it does get a good response from the locals. Look, hello boys. Do you wanna hear some revs? Yes, you do. Do you like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you like that? You like the car? Yes. <laughs> so lame of me. <laughs> Impressing teenagers with someone else's car. <laughs> Go me, made a success out of my life. Oh, classic. Classic Portugal, random dog. You always encounter a random dog. Usually in the middle of the road, that one was at least at the side of the road. Right, I'm heading out of town now, national speed limit again, so can open this thing back up. Got everything in its sportiest setting. And, oh my God, the way this grips. <laughs> it's nuts, and the gear shift. Eight speed automatic, smooth as you like when you're just cruising, but when you're on it and you're in dynamic mode, it absolutely smacks you in the back. When you change gear, it is epic. And that soundtrack is immense. Whew. Anyway, that's enough of that. I gotta calm down a bit. Oh no, I'm gonna go again. Well, I've been driving for a long time now, done over 400 kilometers, finally reaching our stopover hotel. I'm just gonna check what economy I've done in this car. 14.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which I think works out to about 19 miles per gallon, which isn't great. 
What is better though is the fact that I've been sat in this seat for hours and even though it's a very sporty seat, I don't feel uncomfortable. However, it's not quite as comfy as if I was in a Bentley Continental GT. In fact, if you want to see my in-depth review of the Bentley Continental GT, just click up there to watch it. If you don't want to see that and you want to see the rest of this video, then stick with me because tomorrow I've got some other important things to tell you about this new Jaguar F-Type. Well, it's a new day and a new outfit. And in the interest of transparency, I should point out that Jaguar has put me up in this rather lovely hotel. But as a motoring journalist, it's my duty to stay impartial. And so here's five annoying things about the new F-Type. Sorry, Jaguar, thanks for the hospitality and all, but I've got to do it, it's my job. If you're the vain type, you won't like the fact that the vanity mirror is absolutely tiny. Also, there's no light in it, so you can't see how gorgeous you are in the dark. Jaguars aren't exactly known for having the best reliability. And I've already found a problem in this car. Look, the fabric for the seat has come away. It wasn't me, it was like that, honestly. And this is a brand new car. Oh. The rear visibility is all right for a sports car, but when the speed sensitive rear spoiler deploys, ah, it's not so good anymore. The reversing camera just looks like it's been plonked on. Kind of spoils the look of the rear of this car. It's as though it's got a zit and just want to squeeze it. Also, because it's not covered and it doesn't have like a clever little wash system like you get on a Nissan Juke, yeah, it's going to eventually get covered in muck and you're not going to be able to see much out of it. If you're the kind of person who likes to change gears themselves in their sports car, bad luck. This new F-Type is only available with an automatic gearbox. There is no manual, not even on the entry-level 2 litre. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. And like with most normal cars, this whole section here, ooh yeah, is made from one single pressing and that helps improve the strength. You don't have to worry about the infotainment system not having the latest software because the car can get over the air updates, just like your mobile phone. The button for the glove box isn't just a button, it also doubles as a commemorative plaque. Look, it says Jaguar, established 1935. Oh, I love a bit of heritage, me. The car automatically starts in quiet mode so you don't wake up your neighbours with the raucous exhaust. If you want to, you can override that feature and start it with a hullabaloo. I absolutely love the way this car's bonnet is hinged at the front, just like on the original E-Type. Now, I know this might make it a bit hard to work on the engine for technicians, but that's their problem, not mine. I can just appreciate the good looks. And that brings me on to this car's design, which is quite important. This has to be one of the most dramatic facelifts in any car's history. It almost looks like a completely new car, even though obviously it's not. It's got an all new, hear that. Whenever I come to Portugal and try and film outside, there's always a dog barking. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. So this is all new, lower, wider grille. The most significant thing is the design of the headlamps, which are lower than before. And they have like this J effect in them. That's not entirely new. They've always done that, Jaguar has with its cars, but it does make this car's nose look longer than before, even though the car is the exact same proportions. When I first saw it, I didn't really like it, but it has definitely grown on me. It looks very, very aggressive. This is obviously the R model, so it has an even more aggressive look to it with this front splitter. You've got the F-Type logo there as well. It's got presence. I like the clamshell bonnet as well. And it sort of reminds me of the look of the new Toyota Supra when you have that in yellow. One thing this does have, unlike the Supra, is real vents on the bonnet, which I am going to have to illustrate with the tiniest car wow stick of truth. It's more of the twig of truth. Look, I can feed this in through here and prove that it is indeed a real vent. The one down the side isn't though, but we won't mention that. Oh, oh, got it kind of stuck. So this R version has 20 inch alloy wheels with this contrasting black paint on them. Goes well with the contrasting black roof. Obviously you can get a convertible version of this car, but I'm all about the coupe. Down the side, it looks the same as before. You still have the poppy out your door handles there, which work on touch sense as well. Round the back, there's loads of new stuff going on. This whole rear bumper is new. Being the R version, you get a deep diffuser. It looks really, really mean. Also the number plates around, that's a slightly different shape than before. This is new tail lights as well, and the lighting effect in those are designed to look like a chicane. You've got your R badging there, denote this is the range topper. And we're going to deploy a proper twig here. 
we have real exhaust pipes. Oh yeah, look at that. Four of them on this range topping R and you have R logo embossed on the pipes themselves. I really like that. Now, what do you think of this design update? Do you reckon it's successful? Click on the pop-out banner up there to vote whether you prefer the look of this new F-Type or the pre-facelifted version. All right, I'm on the road again. Got over 200 kilometers left to my destination in Lisbon. I suppose it's a good time for me to talk you through the interior of this car. So there haven't been many changes inside. I mean, the general layout is the same. You've got the pop-up events. You've got the grab handle for your frightened passenger. And the quality is generally pretty nice wherever you touch. I especially like the aluminium gear shifters. Oh, they're proper metal. What I don't like so much though is the fact that this door handle feels like cheap plastic because it is cheap plastic. Why didn't they make that out of metal? Everything else is lovely. And they have actually redesigned the door card, so it seems a bit of a shame they didn't change that, make it nicer. One thing they have changed though is the infotainment system. The screen is the same 10 inches that you had before, however, it's an all new system. It's Jaguar Land Rover's latest infotainment, and it's generally all right to use. The system in a Porsche 911 is better. In fact, if you want to see my full depth video review of the new Porsche 911, just click on the pop out banner up there. But you can navigate yourself through the system pretty easily. It's just that some of the icons are a bit small to touch when you're driving. It does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard, which is good because I don't think the Jaguar SatNav is all that great. You've also got digital dials now. Now, some people might say a sports car should have analog dials, but I prefer these and you can change the layout of them and work through different menus as well. So it's handy to just be able to control things right in front of you. Another thing that's new in this car are the seats. And I've already mentioned that I like them and I've already mentioned the fact that I don't like the fact that this particular one is a little bit broken. Another thing that I don't like so much is the storage. So you don't expect much from a sports car, but the door bins really are quite shallow. And if you start getting a little bit carried away on a twisty road, things are gonna fly out there, may end up underneath your pedals, which is never a good thing. There's not much storage under here either. And you've got your connectivity under there as well, which is better. So you've got two USBs, a 12 volt socket, and there's even another one down here as well. So you can plug in a dash cam, which is handy. You just have it up there. Finally then, after hours and hours of driving, I've almost reached my end destination. And there's only one last thing for me to tell you about, and that's this car's price. So it starts from 54,000 pounds, but this old version is actually 97,000 pounds. And if you want a convertible, they're about 5,000 pounds more than the equivalent coupe. Now, if you want to see how much you can save on this car, or any car for that matter, just Google CarWow to go straight there. Think of it as your one-stop car comparison website. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Jaguar F-Type? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the F-Type. You know, the car has technically been around since 2013, but the updates do mean that it's still a really good sports car. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Shouldn't really, but who cares? I'm gonna go off and get an ice cream. See you later. Hello everyone, so I'm back in the cold UK now, but there's something I forgot to tell you about driving that Jaguar. You see on the second day, when I was just cruising, the average economy worked out as 10.4 litres per 100 kilometres, which is 27 miles per gallon, so that's just cruising on the motorway, which really, for a big powerful supercharged V8, is pretty good. Just thought I'd share that with you. Anyway, if you want to watch some more videos, Click the boxes down there, and if you want to see how much you can save on a new car, click over there to go to CarWow.